Hello everybody and welcome back to the map Wolf Hetzer, where we have just seen an incredible game between Brosras and Artivik against Lovenest and DevM and of course Brosras and Artivik managing to win with a pretty off meta uh, tactic. This time swapping around on the western side of Wolf Hetzer, Brosras playing as the Soviets, Artivik playing as the Brits. And on this right spawn we have my personal favorite team in the tournament. Sad that it's down to third place, third place match for them, but uh, that is Loveness and Dev M, as so the chat likes to call it, the cash grab team, but I don't see it that way. We got cash Mix grab. Axis. <laughs> yeah, Dev M with the dollar signs and the and the pounds and the EU and his uh, and the euros in his name. I remember people doing that, but we got Mix Axis on this spawn, both already locking in their commanders. We have German infantry and special operations. I actually haven't seen Command Panther at all in this tournament. I mean, I haven't watched all the games, but is that is that fair to say? Uh, well, it's actually, usually uh, Overwatch. Yeah, DevM today has actually been playing special operations in, in all the Axis games. Um, so, uh, first games, he actually did very, very well with that Veteran C4 Command Panther um, in, in game one. So, uh, he's been doing very well with that. And uh, I, I still think right awesome. now it's a very good... Uh, commander because you know you've just got these amazing flares the recon's good and 2v2 you know indirect fire is so much a part of the 2v2 game that it's uh, invaluable I think oh yeah before uh, overwatch got buffed and grand offensive was released this was the go-to commander it wasn't that long ago this thing was way too strong with the command panther call in just being super versatile so no surprise to me that it's still viable yeah. Um, good opening start for my Axis players. Good aggression. Gonna win this engagement versus Artivik. A UC building. Not not here soon enough to help in these fights. He's gonna get triple teamed here. <laughs> so, uh, start games actually have been pretty aggressive, especially from Love Nest and DevM. A lot of the games that we've seen today. I do just want to point out uh, scores were the wrong way around at the start of this game. That has been fixed now, so it should accurately show Love Nest and DevM 2-1 uh, up in the series. Did Love Nest use uh, German infantry last time as well? Yeah, yeah, he has. They played it very, very well actually. Uh, they they have a great synergy together to be using uh, the fragmentation bombs in the previous game. They kind of like, as soon as the Katusha started firing, you see the flares go down with the fragmentation bombing run from Love Nest. Uh, I don't normally say it about Love Nest and DevM because they're two 1v1 players that kind of band together for these events, but their teamwork mm -hmm. has been fantastic, actually, uh, this weekend. All infantry squads can have an additional infantryman. Yeah, they're... You can't go wrong, you know, when you think about it. Uh, if you're both really good, and you can communicate, then you're gonna have decent results at the very least. So, um, glad to see that they can also show their prowess in this game mode. Nice solid counter attack here on the left side with that UC. He's got his Vickers upgrade, forcing that Gren off. See if they're gonna try to push Love Nest off of this side as well. Looks like they're rotating to do so now. MG just now setting up in the house. Should do a decent job here at fighting back. I think this is a conscripts are in really, cover, so I think this is like a really nice building on this map. Um, it, you know, it's just like such a great spot for machine gun. It's effective on like all angles as well. Raketten, by the way, is built early by Dev M. We get a really good shot on the Universal Carrier, and uh, it already lost a slight bit of health. If it had any more, I'm pretty sure that Raketten shot uh, would have taken it down. Bit of a shame, really, to unleash the Raketten so early without anything else to kind of finish it off. Yeah. Usually what we see from people with the early Raketten is they're just trying to ambush and and assassinate the UC or the M3 without giving it a chance to uh, get away because now they're, that player is going to be a lot more cautious about where they place their light vehicle. Mm. So, element of surprise gone there, but... Nonetheless, forces it back. Absolutely. We're still waiting on commander picks from Brosras and Artivik. And, uh, I mean, we, we can, can just see... say he's going raw artillery, right? 
<laughs> well, actually, we haven't seen it once today. So um, really, yeah, we actually haven't seen it once today. No. Um, oh, so wow. So yeah, it's been pretty decent. And um, Brosras in a previous game actually played the uh, NKVD rifle disruption tactics. Um, we've seen a lot of. Uh, actually, we, I don't think we saw tactical support yeah, today. Yeah, to uh, Vanguard. Um, Vanguard's been the popular choice for them. Yeah, it makes sense. You get the you get the glider with the commandos. You have a croc and a, you have your um, air support click all all in one. Your air support click to win button. <laughs> and then anti tank Overwatch is bonkers. If you can keep vision, it's like guaranteed kill tank. Yeah, so. actually in. I mean, Momo, it's uh, like, I don't know, you haven't seen the first game. I don't want to spoil anything for you. Um, but I mean, game one. Oh, I've been a victim of that, of that, so I know how, how it can be. Oh no, they survived. Really? They survived, they survived with three Panthers, all snared. Uh, it, it was incredible. Um, wow. Yeah. But I'll check that actually, out. Maybe it's because there were so many tanks that the artillery is like, oh my god, who do we target? And they didn't focus fire. <laughs> a little bit of that, I think, and uh, a little bit of lack of vision from the allies. Uh, Brosras and Alphabet. Yeah. Uh, they were really aggressive in the first game, lost it in the second game. Um, picked it up in the third game, so I don't know what we're going to say about game four here. Mm -hmm. uh, but so far, looking like a pretty good game. Brosras and Artifact, I, I actually think it's harder, uh, a little bit harder, just to fight from the south side because of the, the kind of the movement blockage you've got here from the train. Um, but it's a great spot yeah, for I've a noticed British that. mortar pit. Yep, I, I remember, if I remember right, the series we were casting uh, a couple weeks ago, that's exactly what happened, is people were putting mortar pit behind that train station. Uh, Puma's out now for DevM, he's there to counteract the AEC slash T70, pretty standard. There's a nice push here from Artovic with his five-man sections, but that time has now come to an end. Time to go back to base. It's a really brutal cutoff point. Um, completely denying the right-hand side of the map. They just launched coordinated fire uh, onto that sector as well. Uh, unfortunately, they were not able to decap. You see that universal carriage just fears the Puma. Yeah, Pumas are scary. Oh man, this is a long retreat path for Artovic. He's got a Tommy squad here, really, really far behind enemy lines. There's a lot of infantry. Enemy threatening a capture point. Yeah, that I retreat even, path even think is now not that's be a, fun. It's a bad retreat. Remember, they can body block, and they are attempting yep. to body block. Oh, I think they're really lucky. Really, really lucky. Devon missed an opportunity there. There was a mine as well that we saw mine. being planted earlier. You see here, spots the... Spots the Raketten. Puma gets a shot in. AC. Oh, he was trying to ambush him there and he does get the snare off. Oh no, the model that was about to throw got killed. <laughs> that was that was fortunate. Those Volks did their did their duty. Raketten gets decrewed though, and there's two five-man sections here to take it. He's gonna trade the UC for the Raketten. Trade I would take any day if he gets away with it. Oh the The freaking uh, infiltration maze. No way. A lot of grenades going down at the moment. Of course, Puma took down the A. Uh, sorry, the Universal Carrier. The AC. I mean, why is the AC not pursuing the Puma right now? Probably because of the Volks Grenadiers. They don't actually have access to Faust at the moment. They've just got that now. But it is Momo. Sometimes your microphone just has like for two seconds goes really loud. Must have been me getting excited. <laughs> Most for those people who are tabbed out, they got a wake up call. Exactly. I'm not paying enough attention. <laughs> Come back. It's your punishment. <laughs> wow, that was, uh, that was a really strange engagement, actually. But for the Universal Carrier to go down and the Tommy Squad, big losses. For Artivik. In fact, did it go down, that one? This is a good play by Loveness, though. Or sorry, DevM to um, to get his raquette. Yeah, 
It's a little dicey, but he got the UC for it. Section's pushing through the middle now. Oh, that's a nice coordinated fire drop. Actually, right on top of where the MG uh, 42, or the MG 34 is just positioned. And I'm surprised actually that Artifik isn't going for the strategic point there, because it is just such a brutal a decap if they can get it off. I think Brozras at the moment is just trying to defend the mortar pit getting set up. And good job too, because that's going to start working yeah. down Love Nest forces on the right hand side. A pain to deal with. It's the classic build from DevM, Stuka in the build at the moment from the mechanized regiment. I'm pretty sure we're going to see Love Nest going up to uh, tier 4. He's on battle phase 2 right now. Yeah, the team that gets the rocket artillery out sooner, which is always most of the time, it's going to be OKW because of how fast they can get it and how meta mechanized is. Um, you're gonna have a lot uh, better time grinding out these long games. Things get better in C, have a lot more opportunities to get wipes, which is gonna have that long term impact. And also put pressure on the mortar pit. It's like defensive position, you know, they got a uh, separate mortar there parked. There's a Zis gun now around there. Garrison house. Stuke is a perfect option to, to counter that. I always question the decision to put the uh, mortar next to the British mortar pit because it's a really uh, juicy target for indirect fire. Mm -hmm. sure and another that. thing, yeah, another thing to consider is uh, if they're able to wedge them out of that middle position, there's three volts with infiltration mates. Those are not a joke against uh, static uh, emplacements, especially once brace comes off. So that's another option. So it's a lot more uh, costly, but it still, can still be effective. Here comes our first Stuka Barrage, though. He's setting up for it. He's looking for the perfect strike. I'm sure it's going to be on the house and the mortar pit. It's just too juicy. There's a conscript <laughs> in the house, too. <laughs> just asking for it. It's like, please shoot me. <laughs> yeah, we can see where that that's going immediately. I don't think Rosrass has time to get out of there. Oh! I actually... Oh, that's a... Not the best shot, actually. No, what the heck was that? Maybe he was going for some of the units there that were pushing up the center. The engineers, yeah. Shock troops, by the way, arriving on the field. And uh, so interesting, like in the last game, we saw a lot of close range. You wouldn't think maybe it could work, but it does. It does because of all the medium cover from indirect fire. Yep. See. And the T-70 oh, here in a lot of trouble. Yep, that Puma's gonna push. Will it get any counter shots from the Zis gun? Great pickup, AC way too late to the party. Just gets a little consolation shot on the 2-2-2, but has to retreat with Puma and Pacmo there. Great pickup, losing a T-70 is very, very uh, costly there. You really need it to, to counter harass all these units, especially now that Loveness is starting to pick up all his G-43s. Nice little uh, cutoff there with the shocks. Forces, forces these Grens to the side with the smoke, but just outnumbered it's only so much you can do there yeah that unit needs to be used with other units really to get that kind of effect out we're seeing another SWS come out for dev M, so looks like he's gonna go for his tier 4 building yeah, I want to see some obers with SDGs Those are always fun. They got their stupid goggles too. <laughs> <laughs> Thermal goggles. <laughs> there you go. Puma's gonna gonna eat a snare here, chasing down the AEC. But I don't think this this is ready yet. Yeah, it's starting to move up a little bit. It's not even electing to shoot the two two two. It's how deadly Devon is to play against because even as he's retreating, he's ground attacking with the Puma <laughs> in case that. In case that AEC tries to come in. It's just those little things that make a great player. Yeah, 
it really changes the the dynamic you know when you know that retreating isn't isn't safe even you have to change the path that the unit retreats naturally you know it's like you can't even hit the retreat button because they're throwing nades on the retreat path and the, the mm -hmm. best players in the game know exactly how that squad is going to return back to base mm -hmm. um I've actually seen like such high level things in this tournament. Um, very, very helping hands esque things where T 34s like trying to drive in front of units to stop them from taking uh, barrage shells and stuff from Brumbas. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's like really good level play. Yep. Uh, yep. Same thing where like you're kind of caught in a rocket barrage, say a Katusha or whatever it is, and instead of panic retreating, you move forward. You know, something like that too is indicative of a player's experience. And um, their skill level. Great. Stuka Barrage. Was that a Tommy or a Sapper? Uh, Sappers actually just went down. Sappers, I believe, with the Minesweepers. Let's have a look at these shock troops do on the right hand side. I think they've just spotted, by the way, tier 4 uh, being built on that side of the map. And uh, there isn't the munitions for the incendiary barrage that can sometimes be really good at preventing that unit from be uh, that structure from being built. Look at, uh, Look at this push from Artivik though. He just wiped the MG34. Gets pretty close to wiping a Raketan. Fortunately, Devim has enough Volks Grenadiers here. Oh, he's gonna eat part of that nade. Not too bad, but good little good little push from Artivik. Just applying pressure, not not playing statically. Really really um, using his five man sections as an offensive tool. Because right now, even with those STGs at this kind of range of engagement. Um, they're going to be a lot more effective for the Volks until mm. there's Obers out. And you just use a, a flare here, the artillery flare on that uh, decrude MG, trying to deny it. It's a good call. Got to put those munitions to use. Actually, yeah, with the, the base howitzers from Brits are just... You know, they keep using coordinated fire as much as you can because... Like it just keeps it just keeps the enemy army out of the position. You know, just like how are they supposed to recapture the territories? How are they supposed to come back up the map? Uh, yeah, he almost blew fire. up the gun too. Super close. Well, it's uh, still a long wait at the moment for Brozras. He's gone for shock rifle. And uh, late game IS2. Got to bank a lot of fuel for that. Hopefully, you're um, maybe able to see something like a KV8, but maybe a poor choice at the moment given that. We now see the Brumba. That's a huge shot from the Brumba. It wipes the squad there. It's followed by a, a really good Stuka barrage through the, the center of the map. There's a squad of conscripts. Did it actually go down? It did. Huge shot. Little says hello. And the Boombar has had you know, buffs in recent patches. It's now more armored than it was before. They can get it to Veteran C2, it'll get armor skirting. And uh, there's just no reason for us not to play tier 4 these days. Yup. That unit has been rebalanced like so many times in the last year and a half. Yeah. It's always been a point of. But I mean, it's actually been buffed with a lot of other buffs to tier 4. Plus you need tier 4 to get your heavy tanks, it's like, it's a no-brainer. Right, I think. right. Oh yeah, agreed. It was so strong. It's uh, 34, 76 for Brozras. Tier 4 in a better spot than it's ever Oh, this is nice. Centaur actually just... Uh, to get the wipe on the Raketan ground attacking through there to try and stop that from being recruited. But Devon knows better. I'm interested to see how the T 34 is going to deal with this uh, Brumba. Is he trying to find a flank here? Or... Other, actually. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't prepared to engage. He, w he doesn't know where the Puma or the Raketan is. I mean, for for us as casters, we can see where they're at. It would have been a good time for a little bit of a flank, but he's playing it safe. Mm. 
your uh, volume is fluctuating, by the way. Um, yeah, I moved it a little bit because someone was crying about the fluctuation of it being too high, so I put it down a bit, so I'll sure. turn it back up. The enemy is taking our territory. Should be, maybe it's a little bit too much now, but we'll see. No, I think it's fine. Here's another Stuka Barrage. Uh, actually, the Stuka Barrage is from DevM. They haven't really found many targets in the game so far. Six kills. We've seen, uh, we've seen a lot better than that. Constant dropping of coordinated fire from uh, Artifix Tommies. Uh, just to keep making use of this, hopefully... Actually, we do have Command Post up now, so there's two artillery pieces firing Ooh, uh, onto that point on the map. Yep. Sorry to cut you off. The Centaur pushed in a little too far here. Took two Raketan shots. Puma tried to get one in as well. But now the T-34 is exposing itself. AC is not really reacting. Eating a Raketan shot of its own. Almost gets taken out. Puma nearly goes down. Yeah, it's a really good position from the six pounder there just to um, pop shots on the Puma as soon as it comes through that little gap between carriages uh, on the train tracks. And there's a lot going on on the right-hand side at the moment. Love Nest, who is always spot on with his support play. He's got the MG42 and the Pack 40 lined up and ready. And it just makes it really uh, effective support for the Brumba to go in and deal with infantry. Uh, I think allies have actually got a really, really solid hold on this game. Um, they're winning in VPs 100 ahead at the moment. And uh, I think they're just ahead in so many respects right now. Yeah, it seems like they need to refocus their strat. They were trying to take a couple engagements separately, the Axis players, and now that they've been focused on, they need to um, rethink their priorities. And it looks like they're doing so with the VP push. Made that together. But yeah, they really need to start thinking of something to, to uh, counter this center position that the allies have. Stuka just needs to kill the house there. It's really annoying to deal with. Need to start putting pressure on the mortar pit. Force it to force it to brace here and there, cause it's just constantly firing. Get a little break there for your for your Volks and Grens getting shelled. <laughs> oh, two 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 goes down. I think he was uh, busy microing something else, but small pickup there for the allies, but definitely yeah. worth he's it. Actually focused. He had some grenadiers uh, right in the Ooh. south of the map. And uh, it was actually really good. He nearly took down a, a Zis gun. There was a really clever merge from Brosras in time to defend that. And then uh, Brosras is just uh, now able to muscle. Oh. Looked like Devin was going for some retreat path. Stuka there nearly wipes out a section. But whiffs. Oh, so hopeful for the AEC to dive then. Puma was uh, very, very low health, managed to get a good smoke. Not worth it for the AC to go in, and I, I like that Artovic uh, is making the decision to not dive in with units like that, because although they are winning, it is fragile. Um, and of course, Loveness and DevM, especially Loveness, has actually been building up his resources. Uh, he's got access to fragmentation bombs. You can almost so. buy a Panther as well, a couple more fuel. Yeah, this, this Stern Panzer needs to start getting some shots in the middle. You can hide behind these train carts and uh, rail carts and just attack ground. Which looks like what he's doing. Look at that. Nasty. I think this is actually a pretty big moment. So uh, DevM has called in the command Panther. We saw this get to Veteran C4 in game one. Loveness does have Panther bulletins, so we're going to assume that Loveness is going for a Panther. I can see that's building. Right yep. now. <laughs> so there's the Command Panther as well. Yep. That thing's gonna be annoying to deal with. Let's see. Six pounder there gets his first shot off. Stuka can fire in about another 15 seconds. That's, uh, and at the same time, we have an IS-2. Oh yeah, just about to say. And uh, this is gonna create a good battle, I think. Heavily armored units 
Going to be nice for the uh, Panthers to try and get some penetrating shots on those. Now there's a lot for them to deal with. They're going to have a target in the IS-2. Allies have a massive barrier that's going to be moving forwards on the field that they can play their support weapons behind. And uh, I think right now it's about getting that IS-2 some veterancy before they start to work it up the field. There's Love Nest Panther. And I think one of the key things here will be the use of fragmentation bombing because if they can land one successfully uh, onto the IS-2, they may be able to flank it. Now that was a good Stuka Barrage. Nearly wipes a section and he takes out the AEC. It's exactly what they need to dislodge the center position. Just constantly forcing them to reposition while applying pressure with the infantry at the same time. That's a lot of... Oh! Puma gets a little pot shot in on the centaur. <laughs> keep trying to keep him awake there. See if he's paying attention. Love Nest Panther is out now, supporting this right flank, right VP against these two Soviet tanks. Let's see if Devem rotates as well to help out. That's there a we great go. First shot from the Panther, penetrating at that distance. I just took, uh, took out a lot of S mines here, but there's still a few left. Oh, no, no. Here's the fragmentation oh, bomb. Oh. Actually, I think it wasn't the best. It took a little bit longer to come in than I think Love Nest was hoping for. He said yep. Artovic is going to lose his Tommy squad there, the one which actually has the uh, coordinated fire pyrotechnics upgrade. So now he's uh, not easily able to drop that artillery down like he has been doing. There's still no commander pick from him. We've seen this in so many games from Artovic. He really does leave it to the last minute. We have 300 points remaining. Yeah, he wants to be really, really certain he makes the right pick. I mean, at this point, 26 minutes in, you know they know exactly what the Axis player's strat is, what units they have. They have late game units out. So, oh look, speaking of that, it goes uh, Royal Artillery. It's a reverse uh, Caster's Curse. I'm not sure if you're aware, by the way, Mario, um, as uh, we passed yesterday, but Perimeter Overwatch is banned at the moment as an ability. You can still use the commander and everything else is in it, but uh, no I heard, I heard it's yeah. banned, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. It's still really strong, though, with the, with the early warning and um, concentration barrage, but... I'm assuming they're all aware of it too, right? It wasn't like a mistake and he thinks he can use it. <laughs> no. It's still okay. commonly used. I mean, I think it's normally used earlier than now because one of the best benefits is that if you're playing Universal Carrier AEC and you tech, it's like you nearly almost end up at enough CPs for the Valentine anyway. So it's been right. a... Yeah. It's been a good pick, but this late in the game, you can only assume he just doesn't want to put pyrotechnics on another Tommy squad. True. comes another Stuka Barrage, right on the Zisk gun, wipes it out! All that veterancy. <laughs> there comes the infantry assault, just how it should be. Such a quick Immediately pops a camo. Yeah, <laughs> did you see that? This bulk's literally like two feet in front of it and it just vanishes. Oh, that Command Panther's a little bit too much Yeah. Not even just the Command Panther, a lot of models died there from Dev M as the uh, coordinated barrage from Artovic rains down. Another squad goes down as Volk's yep. Grenadiers die. And uh, some serious losses for Axis there. We're waiting now for a Panzerwerfer from Love Nest. They've tried to get this AT gun, they've tried to throw everything they can at it. It is going to get away. Love Nest there, it's he's going to try and pop a ground attack shot. It oh. misses. That's this cake, the break. <laughs> so many. It actually got recruited by shock troops. They're gonna have some kind of defense if it gets rushed in. That's a great uh, recruiting, actually. It's expensive to reinforce it, but it will be great against the broom burner. <laughs> Centaur takes a couple shots there. Devon replaced that Volks Grenadier and is also building another Raketan. Sexton out for Artovic. I'm gonna start maybe trying to uh, use creeping barrage against the uh, rocket artillery. All it'll take is one lucky hit on the Stuka or Panzerwerfer to knock him out. And uh, 
the longer well, the game I mean, goes. The way that the map is set up as well, you can base fire at a considerable distance, so there's also mm -hmm. the opportunity for tasty base wipes. There's a Katusha Barrage coming in on the pack and Gren. Oof. There is that, is that outside the base? Oh, okay. Right, on top of the... right behind the, yeah. Oh, it's a big hit from the artillery as well. Wipes out the gun on the Stuka. One more to land there. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, the IS-2 is uh, moving as Brazras goes in to deal with this bunker. Love Nest has been holding the right-hand side of the map like, so well during this game. Yeah, he actually had a bunker up. <laughs> but it's killed. I mean, it's great, really, to draw fire away, uh, you know, from from the Panther. I mean, those tanks do go in, but you can just see Love Nest is just uh, pushed away. Allowing those Soviet vehicles to come in. That's going to turn rear armor here against the uh, T-34 and the IS-2. Don't want to be doing that. Mm -mm. Triple triple cap about to be in place once again. VPs are a bit even now, but they're going to start ticking quickly. I actually this really... Vickers on the left side has been here the entire game, just <laughs> ready yeah. to get a no-go zone. Stuka firing a little too close to uh, the front line. Let's be careful. Maybe it's a little bit of a bait with the Rakens, who knows? Oh, decent gone. shot as well. It takes down the six-pounder and uh, good of Dev M straight in with the Puma to destroy the wreckage. So now uh, Artifik is going to have to replace that entirely. Top-level play there. Just constantly forcing a spend of manpower from his opponents. There's camouflaged AT guns on the right-hand side, so that Panther's going to be so careful when it does go in. Oh, There's another Katusha Barrage in the middle. Oh, I might wipe out these grants. Okay. A little bit, uh... I don't know if it was good placement by Love Nest or just bad placement from uh, Rose Rass, but... Light damage there. Could have been really bad. That Katusha was so close. Oh, denies the middle cap. Save some VPs there. <laughs> Sexton firing as well. Good nade from those sections. Just all out brawl. So many losses. This is going to lead up to some kind of decisive engagement. Centaur nearly gets wiped out by the double rag command panther. Oh, Looks two like limbs from the firefly oh, and narrowly missed. Rat. Look at the counter fire from the double raquettons. The panther is clear range to go in, but there are sappers there. They don't have the munitions available to uh, oh. to snare. There is a D crew on they the centaur. Abandoned. It's not killed. Oh, they need to use one of their uh, rocket artillery trucks to, uh, wait, to take wait. that out if they noticed it. Please, dear God. Wait a minute. Where are these flares? Because when we hear these, when we see these flares go off, that normally means we're going to see um, fragmentation bomb. That's right. Yep. And I want you to see what the vision is like for them at the moment. They can see the firefly. Yes. There Coming we go. Coming on the zip gun. That's it. We know it. Oh no, it's not. He actually goes for it on top of the IS-2. Oh, but there's nothing there to back it up. Why take down that that AT gun? Yes, it does stun the IS-2, but for what? Oh, the Panther missed the killing shot on the Zis gun. That sucks, because now the cons have recruited. IS-2 is pushing up. If we, In case you didn't notice, the Puma did clean up the abandoned uh, Centaur, and now the Command Panther is just pushing up into the base. These NG snares aren't going to be enough, because that's a full health. Look at this push from DevM. He gets a bit robbed there. <laughs> oh my god, the ram. The crew shot. And the shot. Look at the health on the Firefly! Oh my god, I would be so mad right now. Okay, <laughs> it's abandoned another abandoned. again! Another it's abandoned, abandoned again, the main gun is destroyed, he oh. can't do anything, and you know the Katusha managed to get away with that as well. The IS-2 oh. rolls in, and that is really, really lucky. Now we're going to see Panzerwerfer, but where is it going to be? Jerry's it's actually... Luckily... Luckily for DevM, he just instant recalled in a Command Panther. Puma's coming in now on its own. Looks like, uh, that's just so, that, that's just dumb. <laughs> he had to use his Puma both times to secure uh, an abandoned tank. And the second time he loses his Puma because of it. Hashtag abandoned. 
that is. Could you imagine if you got the Katushas there as well? That T-34 yeah. is a hero. That T-34 is a hero. Solid, uh, solid, uh, thinking there from Bozrash with the ram. That Command Panther was going all the way. I think it was a, I think it was a decision from DevM to make the push there, because they're, they're dying through VPs. He found an opportunity. It just didn't go his way completely, so. Uh, yeah, it was a great Best decision. Best we can do is, yeah, it's to commend him for his, for his, uh, trying to, to make it work. But I actually did, Fortunately, like, he had another, none of another that, one. none of that would have happened if Lovenest had used the fragmentation bombs on the Firefly, I think. It was a really good opportunity there to do that. To take it. Yeah. Uh, why it was on the IS-2, maybe to buy Devon some time to push in, I'm not sure, but yeah. Axis actually, with 89 VPs remaining, seem to have got a bit of a foothold back onto the center of the map now. They're going for a triple cap themselves. And uh, yeah, they that have a gave... long amount of VPs to take down from their opponents. Absolutely. That push, even though it wasn't as successful as Devem was hoping it to be, it gave the Axis a lot of ground to push in and secure territory. It looks like uh, Devem used another set of flares, and Loveness has enough munitions for another fragmentation bomb. Look at these Rakettons creeping up. Double Rakettin almost with the Panther, almost assassinates the Sherman. It does! Sherman goes down, T-34 and ISD pushing up here, along with the Tutsu Barrage. Might actually take out a Rakettin here. That's nice. I mean, actually, every time they see those artillery flares drop from DevM, they, they need to be careful. The double Rakettin follow-up with the Panther is one of like, the best formations I've seen for finishing off enemy tanks. It's, it's like a guaranteed victory. But uh, DevM, he's losing... Uh, He's losing a lot yeah. of Volks Grenadiers at the moment. So actually, uh, let's just have a look at the armies at the moment. And uh, I think, you know, it's still pretty even in terms of what's on the field. Brozras and Lovenest are the ones with armies, and Devem and Artifik are the ones trying to like pick up the pieces at the moment. Yeah, that Raketan loss was actually huge, because that was nearly Vet 5. <laughs> so it's going to be tough. For Devem. He has the Panther and the Stuka, but he only has two essentially combat capable squads in those Volks Grenadiers. Other ones just fresh meat straight out of the of the barracks <laughs> coming into a 37 minute match. Fortunately, uh, Loveness is fully committed to this bunker uh, strategy. He rebuilt it and it forced those shocks off. It's really doing its, its job to hold down this VP. But it looks like the uh, Zhukov, Zhukov division here is coming to take care of it again. <laughs> These tanks. There's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of distractions from Lovenest. He's constantly throwing infantry squads behind enemy lines so that they, the, the tanks just cannot find the time to go up and deal with, uh, with that bunker. Yeah, I've got to be careful here. He's trying to go for the trench on the left-hand side, Firefly. Is uh, ready. He probably just wants to pick up some veterancy on the Firefly. Yeah, they really need to use some kind of artillery on this Vickers. It's it shouldn't, you know, with this level of play, one MG shouldn't be holding down a whole sector like this when you have two rocket artillery units and a boom bar. Just just kill it. Just kill the trench. <laughs> if you can't kill the squad, just kill the trench. Trying to use the Katusha to take it down now. There's an incendiary barrage just called in on the center there on the MG42 Vet 3. That goes down. Beautiful. And now you've got uh, infantry that are trying to retreat through the flames. They're losing a lot of health here. Nearly lost a Vet 3 engineer as well. Panzerwerfer from Love Nest coming in to support the uh, assault against the trench on the left hand side still isn't oh. enough. How did the Panzerwerfer die? T34? Yep, T34 just popped its head in there and took a shot off on it. And there goes the bunker down on the right-hand side. I think allies are about to start coming into this, Momo. It looks like it. Katusha, I think the Panzerwerfer was going to attack the Katusha. It nearly killed it, but it paid the oh, ultimate no, no, it price. Was, uh, it was actually firing on the uh, trench on the left-hand side, the British oh. trench. Got the round off, but wasn't able to get back in time. Oh, it's looking strong for Axis for a moment. Devem is using the uh, the artillery flares again. I'm yep. sure it's going to be... For a frag target. I'm sure it's going to be in the back of the map, so we're going to look for it. 
Oh, he's dropping it on the engineers and the ice too. Is he paying attention? He got the repair off in time. Oh, is it gonna wipe all of them? No. no it's badly placed actually. And uh, this is that unusual, to be honest, from Love Nest. He's actually been really, really good with these in all of the other uh, games and series that we've cast. That's a huge hit from the Brumba. Oh. The entire squad of shocks goes down. Squad wipe after squad wipe right now in this game. And there we heard his 75 VPs middle. remaining for Axis. It's a triple cap in for allies at the moment. 0.75 VPs per second. So we've got not much longer left of this game. Unless Axis can get back on one VP at least. the VPs are going down right now. Yeah. How frustrating though for Loveness and Devon. They were 2-0 up in the series at the end of game two. They just needed to win one more game and their opponents are taking uh, two games in a row. That's insane pressure for both teams to play uh, an ace game. And at this rate, it looks like it's going to be an ace game. Absolutely, let's see that going back. The infantry, infantry just isn't there. Oh, the Brumba! The Brumba is so good! Just firing shells over the building. And uh, taking down the Zisk gun. Bit of support there from the Stuka. Artivik, be careful, late retreat on the Tommies. He's just keeping units inside of this VP. As long as he can keep bodies in there and he stops the decap. If it drops below, say, like 10 VPs, I think it's pretty secure that. It's too late, yep. Yeah, I think it's too late at this point. They cannot decap. So uh, that looks like we are going to be seeing an ace game between these two teams. And uh, what an incredible performance by Brozras and Artivik. We were going to be taking this to an ace game, winning two games in a row from a 2-0 down situation. Uh, GG, really GG. GG.